Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Rakesh Gupta. I'm co-host of Automation Hour and blogger at AutomationChampion.com. I post content around PowerAuth, Apex, Lightning Web Component, Salesforce Flows, CRM Analytics, and Salesforce Releases. If you want to learn these topics, please subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as my newsletter. In this video, we will learn how you can auto-generate renewal opportunity with line items. So let's start with the requirement and you can find all this instruction on blog number 84 on my website automationchampion.com. So imagine uh, you are working on a sales cloud implementation and uh, you have a requirement. As soon as the users mark an opportunity to close to one, you want to generate auto create a renewal opportunity where close date equals to today plus 365 days and clone all the product from old opportunity that is the close one opportunity to new opportunity and set unit price equals to zero. So how do we get started? So first thing first, you have to understand how these objects are connected. So like for example, if I open my notepad, so there are a couple of objects here we are talking about. First is opportunity, then opportunity product. So one opportunity can have oppor multiple opportunity product. So that is one to many relationship. Then uh, we have two more object, which is called a product. So you can have as many as product you want. And then you have price book and then price book entry, which is basically a monthly detail relationship junction object between. <laughs> so you have product, price book, and then price book entry, which is basically a connections between product and price book, a junction of server junction object because a product can be associated to multiple price book and one price book can have multiple product. And price book is also associated with opportunity. It means once you select a price book on an opportunity, then you can only able to select product from that price book. And price book entry, the one I was talking earlier, is a junction object between product and price book, which enable associating many to many relationship between product and price book. Now, if you are a person who need to who need something that to visualize it, so best is to go to the schema builder. And how you open the schema builder, go to object manager, go to the setup, object manager, and a schema builder. And you can do the same things on Lucid Chart. If you have Lucid Chart paid edition, I don't know if it's paid or free edition. And Lucid Chart has a ability to generate this kind of ERD diagrams there as well. So you can use to understand as well as when you need such diagram into your architecture document or some documents. So I have selected all this object and you can see opportunity has a relationship between opportunity product, which is one to many relationships, then have price book entry as well. And then you have product and uh, price book, and these are connected via the price book entry. All right. So you can find this uh, links here as well. So you can go and read about uh, read about these objects, how these objects are connected. All right. And which fields you have to use and all. And the API name of the product is product two. That is the key part to remember. So now let's start with the process flow diagram. It is very simple. A record trigger flows because we want to take the actions when someone modify an opportunity and set opportunity close uh, stage equals to close one. And it is all happening on the opportunity. We have to check if it's closed one. And for this, we will use a field called as stage equal to close one. If no, then stop it. If yes, then create a renewal opportunity. Set the date equals to today plus 365 days. And we can set other fields as well. And then we will see if there are any line items on the previous opportunity. If no, then let's just stop it. Then we don't want to clone that line items. But if there is a line item exists, we will take those line items, change the line items, parent record, which is basically old opportunity to new opportunity and then insert it. So this is high level. It is going to work as a process flow diagram. Now, uh, let me show you the demo first. So let me make some adjustment to this opportunity first. So see. Today, and I can change the name to 23. All right. So let's mark and let, let's see first if there are any product associates. So there is one product associated to with this one. And I can add one more product if there are anything available. So let me add this. Go on the days 12. All right, so we have two product into this one, this opportunity. So let's mark this as a closed one. So this opportunity is closed. And let me go back to the opportunity. And if you notice, this is closed one. A new opportunity has created uh, where closed date is today plus 365 days. 
again, I'm not, I haven't put any automation on the name, uh, but you will see the stage equals to prospecting. And when I go to the related, uh, you will see these two opportunity with the unit price zero. All right, so this, this was the demo. Let's get back to our flow and see how we can build such flows. So starting from the first, if you remember our process flow diagram, this is going to be the record trigger flows. And again, why record trigger flow? Because we want to take the action on when someone closed on an opportunity. So imagine if you have a requirement when uh, your sales rep is not closing an opportunity and after 100 days, you are to automatically close it. So that is the use case of schedule trigger flow because no one is updating that opportunity. So you want to such opportunity to mark as closed loss. So then you have to use something that job that run every night or every week or every couple of hours and uh, do certain actions. But in this scenario, we want to take the actions when someone is marking that opportunity as a closed one. So that is the classic example of record trigger flows. Now we are using after save, uh, that is action and related list. And why after save? Because we want to uh, perform action on the related records because we want to create a related records. And that's the reason why you, why we are using after say. Next, uh, you have noticed here I am not putting any entry criteria here uh, in the flows because I usually use one after say flow for that object, and that's where the decision element come here. So decision element is to check if the record stays name equals to close one. And this is, this is the second option I have selected. Then it only fires when last time it was something else, and this time when the user update the record and it is close one. I don't want to fire this flow every time when it, it was close one and user is updating another field. So that is the options you have to select the second option. <laughs> Next, uh, I want to create a renewal opportunity. So there are various ways to do so. You can use uh, S object, which is record variables, or you can use the existing uh, dollar record, but uh, to make it very simple, I am using create record and I'm using one record and use the separate record resource and uh, see it's separate resource and literal values. So opportunity, close date, and this is the formula. And the name is coming from the current opportunity name, uh, product to ID is price book ID is basically the price book ID from the record. The record type I'm selecting from the existing record, the stage name is prospecting. And here, this is basically, you have to pass the ISO code from the existing record. If you don't pass it, so it might be, uh, Salesforce will automatically take the ISO code from the logged in user. And if the logged in user ISO code is different, then you will get an error message. Like for example, my ISO code setup as USD, but this opportunity was created by some colleagues in US. So, and uh, his or her ISO code is USD. So when you create this opportunity, now the new opportunity ISO is INR, and now we are also trying to associate the product which was in USD to INR, so then you will get the error message. So better to use the same ISO, make sure that all users have the same ISO code, if not, then try to use the ISO code from the existing record. So this is one option. Another option is you can say, okay, now uh, use all value from a record variable. So now you can, uh, let's say you can create a record variables. For example, here, let me create a variable. And let's say record variable. So we can say, okay, let's, let's use this record variable, but this record variable does not have anything. So in that case, now you have to put one step in between for the mapping. And you can say here, this is our record variable. And you can say, okay, now name. And so name is coming from name. And then you can say, okay, the stage is coming from what we are going to enter. And it is basically the same thing what mapping you have done in this element we were doing before. So there are various ways to create record element and create the record. So we are using separate resource and literal value. So you have to select an object and map it. If you don't want to do this, so go ahead, create the record variables like we created and then put a mapping here before you have to put a mapping. So go ahead and map the fill value. So Usually, uh, I prefer this way so that uh, in future uh, I can put one update, uh, one insert, uh, update, or delete or delete element only one time. I don't want to create this update multiple times, same record. So, so this is we create opportunity, renewal opportunity. So this, so now let's go get back to this formula. So this formula is nothing but today plus 365 days. The record close date plus 365 days. Now, next, uh, so we create the renewal opportunity. Now we want to also clone 
the opportunity product from the closed one opportunity. So for this, uh, use the get record element from the opportunity product saying, okay, hey, give me all opportunity product where opportunity ID equals to the current opportunity ID and make sure that you select all because we want to get all opportunity product from the closed one opportunity. Once you are done, uh, we have to check if it returned anything or not. So you can use get line items, which is basically the previous get element it's null false it means if it's false means there is something so we want to take the next step if not then you stop it means there is no line item now once you have this and there are multiple opportunity then you have to use the loop why because there are multiple line items so imagine about your excel sheet where you have multiple line items uh, into your multiple rows in excel sheet and you want to update each line uh, opportunity id on the each line item so that's where you have to use the loop so loop will give you one record at a time because everything is uh, stored here in a list which is basically a multiple rows in excel sheet and you want to get one record at a time and and update opportunity id on those line items so that is the loop element from the get line items and this is we want to create an opportunity line item so that's where you have to create a record variable a record variable is used to store all field of single record <clears throat> so a record variable is used to store all field of and record so in this case record variables are opportunity product if you want to use a list or collection or record collections variable and that is basically you have to select this one all right so now here Opportunity ID is newly created opportunity ID, which is from coming from the create recall, create renewal opportunity create element. Then price book entry ID is coming from the current record, the loop loop variable price book entry ID. Then sales price is a zero and quantity is coming from the current items from the loop and quantity. So this loop will give you one record at a time. So it is going here and associate and we are mapping everything into the opportunity line item record variable then next step is it is possible that you can put this create element inside the loop which is not a best practice because you may hit the governor limit of dml 151 exception and that's where a best practice comes here where we will create a record collections variable of type opportunity line items and add our previous record variable into this one so imagine this is basically you don't want to uh, add uh, or put a create element here so you are add, you are creating a bucket and putting all the items into that bucket and then you are putting an update or insert or delete element on that bucket and that is this is basically nothing but a record collections variable of the type opportunity product so that is here we are adding everything into this record collections variable from the record variables once it is done you can say okay i want to create a multiple record using create record element and select your bucket and activate it and test it again to recap first you have to use a record trigger flows on opportunity when opportunity is created or updated and action and related records then check if opportunity is closed one then create a renewal opportunity by mapping the fields from the current record as well as using a formula to set close date equals to close date plus current close date plus 365 days then use the get record element to find out if there are any opportunity product exists on that opportunity using all record and this is just to validate if the previous get record element returned anything or not if it's returned then we are using the loop element to going through one record at a time at a time from the record collections variable of the get get line items and then here we are adding we, we are mapping uh, our opportunity line item record variables fills and that opportunity id is nothing but the create newly created opportunity id price book is coming from a loop uh, opportunity price book entry id and the same for the quantity and here we are adding our record variable into the record collections variable that is nothing but a bucket to make sure that we may put we will do a bulk record create at the end is using the single dml statement rather than using multiple DLM, dml statement inside the loop that might cause a dml 151 exception and then here create a multiple record using our bucket which is nothing but record collections variable thanks for watching and please subscribe my youtube channel and feel free to reach out if you have any question thank you